Incredible afternoon, everyone. Incredible afternoon. Hello, everybody. And welcome to another live video with Shakia, the professor of HS Inc. Today, we are going to have a dedicated topic, and that is um, infringing on different intellectual properties and things that are officially and or not officially trademarked. Um, and how to be able to check for those things, what you should be mindful of, understanding the risk in um, understanding the risk in those things. All right. So that's what we are going to discuss today. If this is something that you guys are interested in, which 
all of you guys as creative entrepreneurs, as crafters, you should be interested in because if you don't understand how this works, you can find yourself on the receiving end of a cease and desist letter from those who um, who own uh, or who, whose intellectual properties, those uh, who, who they belong to. There we go. Lord Jesus. Whole mouthful. All right. So if this, again, is something that you're interested in, stick around. This is something that's really important. So go ahead, share, 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 share. And I just realized I never did at everyone in my groups. Um, I just kind of uh, shared it to it. But if you guys can like really, really like this is something that is very, very important, especially if you make T-shirts, if you make tumblers and like just any type of creative designs, you need to be mindful of this, especially if you're one who's... Um, putting it out um, on websites, Etsy, things like that, because it makes it to where you're a lot more visible. It's kind of different when you're just doing it for yourself versus when you have a website, when you have, when you're putting stuff on Etsy, if you are openly advertising, for, uh, advertising these things, um, you get put on their radar a little bit more, uh, a, lo a lot easier than if you were just kind of as a crafter and you were making it for yourself. Once it's in the public, they now can can um, can prove and can verify that you are monetizing off of their intellectual property and they will come out to you either with a cease and desist first or they may end up just going straight to legal action and things of that nature. So this is a very important topic. So if you guys can go ahead and help me out and give this video a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a heart, tag a friend. Um, if you're watching this over in any of my Facebook groups, because I shared it over there, make sure that you click on the video and then you hit share or tag someone, because if you tag them and they're not a part of the group, they're not going to see it. Um, and also share, 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 share. This is a really, really important topic. Okay. Uh, so over here as well, go ahead and hit share, run those likes up. Thank you guys so much for a thousand likes um, over on TikTok. I thank you guys so very much for that. But this is going to be a good one. I'm telling you, um, you know, you might want to watch it back and have your pen and your paper and write some things down as far as where you go to check these and just, um, you know, research and verify for yourself so you get a full understanding of how this all works. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and just, um, at everyone here. Okay. And let me do my other group real quick. Let me find this post. Um, at every, uh oh, All right, let's see. Uh, my cousin sent me something. All right, so yeah, you guys can hear me loud and clear, just making sure. Incredible afternoon, incredible afternoon. Hey, 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 hello, 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 everyone. Hey, just say. All right, so let me just get my intro out of the way. Let's get into this. Again, I am Shakia, the professor of HSN 365. We are home of the Honestly Speaking brand, which y'all can see on my other fluches back there, but the Honestly Speaking brand of Submation Ink and Paper. Um, pigment ink and other accessories. You can find that on our website, shop.hsinc365.com. We are also the home of Siloholics Anonymous, where I've been teaching you guys to use Silhouette Studio for the past eight years. Uh, whether you have a machine or not, Silhouette Studio is a great um, beginner and gateway designing program for beginners or, you know, like me, I've been doing this for a while and it's still my go-to. And then I'll transfer to other programs. Uh, we also are the home of 365 Creative Academy, where I help you to unlock your creativity in a wide variety of classes and trainings. Um, and even ones like, you know, like tonight, we have our creative business program. And we're going to get um, into a little bit more of this uh, tonight in our session, um, as well as some other things as well. So I'm going to actually kind of change up what I was going to talk about. Um, and it's just based off of like this past week. So we're going to go through that in our creative business program. So we have programs like that. That's also going to help you in your business. And this is one of the topics that's really going to help you in your business. So if you're just kind of jumping on because someone tagged you, you just got the notification. What we're going to talk about today is the importance of understanding, um, intellectual properties and infringing on trademarks and copyrights and things of that nature and how that affects you as a creative or 
you know, like you guys like to say, crafter, um, and in your craft business, your creative business, your custom business, how do those things affect you? And this stems from a video that was made public. Um, and I and I, I just hate that I, I don't have it written down. I can probably go and find it. Um, I know it's probably in my histories, but basically it was a young lady who kind of came on and told her story about receiving a cis and desist letter on the phrase Godfidence. So meaning, you know, your confidence is like through God. It's basically a religious type uh, saying. And she purchased a file from, a, I think for her, it was from an Etsy shop. So it's not like she went and typed it out. I do believe she went and purchased the file and it was one of her best sellers and her top sellers. And so the person is saying, hey, you know, you have complete licenses to this and things like that. And, you know, yet she's still hit with this cease and desist and someone saying, hey, you are infringing on our intellectual property. We are the owners of this phrase. We have it trademarked. Um, and we have it trademarked in the classification of uh, like um, shirts and, and mugs and cups and like, you know, basically for retail and things like that. So you need to stop selling this immediately um, is basically what it boiled down to. And when I saw what it was, I'm like, I know I just saw this somewhere else. And um I felt it was important for me to come on and talk about this because I have, um, uh, you know, I've encouraged you guys to go to, um, what's some people call them? <laughs> um, Jesus, uh, Creative Fabrica, because that's the whole website that's up. And everything that's on there, like they don't allow for like, you know, um, any licensed characters or, um, you know, brand name things and stuff like that. Like you cannot go on there and find any of that. It's normally things that people have designed themselves, which I actually meant to talk about this a while ago because someone, if you did not know, the a smiley face is actually trademarked and copywritten. I think it's, I forgot how they have it, but technically even that symbol of a, the smiley face the person that owns that intellectual property, which you would think, yo, it's just a smiley face, but they were able to file and get it approved. So they can come after you for putting smiley faces within your design. Seems very like, dude, it's a smiley face. But if someone um, wanted to trademark that and they're saying that it is connected to their brand and their business, they can stop you from using it if that was approved for them to use. Now, there are some words, of course, that will never be because they're general words and you can't like corner the market on it. But for certain things, if it's on there and there's a difference between someone applying for it and it actually being registered and it's on there. So you have to be mindful of that also when you're going to go check it just because they have uh, put it in and they have registered for it um, and they've submitted, and they pay for it. It doesn't mean that it was approved just yet. Um, so be mindful of that. And we're going to talk about that, but I'm always sending people to creative fabrica and I'm like, okay, you know, it has a commercial use licensing because we assume that people are designing these things based off of, you know, um, that they are able to design them. So yes, these designs are created where they chose their own font. Like they didn't go and like just straight up copy someone's font or their layout, their design and things like that. Right. So they didn't do that. They created it themselves. They arranged it. They laid it out. You know, in my design class, I teach about layout. I teach about choosing fonts. That's actually what, you know, the homework assignment was two weeks ago. Um, they have, you know, we're going to meet this coming, oh, uh, is that Thursday? Yeah, we have a session this coming Thursday um, with their different text designs. So I teach how to create these things yourself, right? So you go on there, some people will draw things out. Some people will create backgrounds. If it's just a shape of a heart, a unicorn or whatever, normally someone is drawing these things out. A lot of people are using these items for KDP, um, which is it's this whole thing, digital products. Like, you know, they'll make coloring books or journals and things like that. So they'll tell you, go to Creative Fabrica, get these images. You know, if you want to make a coloring book for kids, they have all of these outline images. Go get that. 
mix them into, put them all together. Hey, now you have a book because they're saying you have the rights to use these um, in a commercial setting. And you can take this and you can make money off of it. And so I've said that, right? So I've sent people to this site, but it wasn't until this video came out and she talked about this one particular phrase. And there are actually quite a few. Well, I'm not sure. I'm going to, I meant to go back and look at it. Um, if it was still just the one that was on there. Um, but there were quite a few designs on this particular website that had that word in it. Now, Technically, they're going to say you have your you have commercial use of this, meaning the fonts that I selected, the layout that I chose, you are able to put this on shirts, cups, mugs, flags, keychains, rags, whatever it is, and you're going to use it and no one's going to come and say, hey, that's my design. You can't use it. But the kicker in that is they don't own the rights to that phrase in general. So even though that site is giving you commercial rights to it, they cannot technically because that, that phrase in particular is protected. So whenever you're going to these sites, if it's not something that, I mean, even when it's an, you know, I want to say that because most times when it comes to images and backgrounds, someone, um, someone has like physically drawn, you know, that out and colored it in and, you know, but it's so hard when it comes to words. Like that's the part that will trip you up every single time um, is the words. And the fact that someone has trademarked that it's their business name um, and they've trademarked it. So, hey, you can't use this this way because it's going to cause brand confusion. And that's what happened here. So, like I said, uh, the phrase is Godfidence and... Um, Yes. So that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, that's where we're going. So she said, is there a site you can check what is registered and what is not? Yes, there is, which is going to be USPTO. USPTO. That is the site that you would go to to do a trademark search and you're going to put in the words. So if you guys don't know, things like onesies, right? We just think of that is something that babies wear. But when you are promoting on your websites, your Etsy's, your marketplace, you'll see a lot of times, and I've done videos and I try to not even say the word, although, you know, they're not going to really stop you from saying the word, but um, I try to not say that. And I'll say infant body suits. And people will say that. Is it great for SEO? No, because the word that people automatically think of is onesie, even the adult onesies. You're not able to, you're technically not supposed to use that word when describing that because that is something that is trademarked by Gerber, right? That is something that they created. So you can't just use that. Um, co the word koozies. So a lot of people will say can coolers, whether you sell the blings, if you sell them decorated, using the words can, I mean, using the word koozie, whether it's with a K or a C can eventually get you flagged and they're going to come after you, right? Um, so you have to be mindful of that. Yeah, it's not the same saying can cooler, but the more we as a community of creators, we start to use those words, our audience, our customers will realize that, hey, um, yes, it's the same thing. So when they see can cooler and they see, you know, they know it's the same. They may ask you about a koozie, but your communication and all of your public advertising and promo should be can cooler, insulated can cooler, foam can cooler, uh, neo, like words like that, because you just cannot say koozie with a K or so well, you cannot advertise and write out koozie with a K or a C. Okay. So it's little things like that, that we would not even think was trademarked and they are. It kind of sucks because it is going to make more work for, for us as creatives and, you know, crafters where you really should check everything, like literally check every single thing um, to protect yourself. Sometimes you may not find out until you're hit with that cease and desist letter and you're like, man, how in the heck was this? You know, I know um, there was someone, someone threatened them because something like sublimation 101. 
I don't think that would ever be approved because that's so broad. And although you might want to build a business around it, and let's say you've made that your name, they can still deny it and say, no, you can't because even though you want to make that your business name, it describes like just the basics of sublimation. So people are going to use that all the time. Like you, there's no other way to really kind of describe like teaching the beginnings of sublimation. So it doesn't mean that that's going to be approved. They don't just approve, you know, random things. Like you have to show that it is something that you use in commerce first, that you're using it. It's associated with your brand. Trademarks are not meant to just protect like just random sayings. You have to show that you're building a business and you're building a brand around it for them to actually approve it. Um, so I always hear people say, they'll make up like little sayings and say, okay, well, no, I want to trademark that. It doesn't work that way. That's not how it, how it works. So make sure that you guys go back and you are looking at several articles and you're really reading what it means to trademark something and don't think that you can just kind of trademark a word just because hey I, I said it first and i want to be able to make all the things with it it doesn't really work that way for trademarks okay um yes this is becoming more and more of an issue so uspto is where you're going to go to check it okay um i've been telling my husband about this uh yes definitely need to be having these conversations and you're going to type it in. Now, the one thing that you will end up seeing a lot of the times is, um, you know, you're looking for the ones that are dead, that are alive. You want to look and see, you know, the dates on it, who, who you know, who owns it. Um, and also you're looking for that registration number to make sure that it was actually registered and they didn't just apply for it. Like I said, you can apply for it, but it can be rejected. Uh, whether you had your classification wrong, if it's something that, you know, is just something you cannot actually trademark because it's a common phrase or common word, um, you know, just like with us, with HSE, like, you know, there are certain stipulations that you have to put in there that says, you know, I'm not claiming any rights just to the word honestly, because that's a, you know, hello, that's a word in the dictionary. I can't just use that um, by itself and say, I want to trademark my company is just called honestly and just say, that's it. Right. I can't have rights to the word ink by itself. You know, the numbers three, six, five, I can't do that by itself, but honestly speaking now becomes unique to me. HS sync 365, um, together now becomes unique to our company. That is what they are looking for in those unique markers. And, you know, you can have stuff in there. We'll say, you know, let's say yours was sublimation emporium. You know, you don't have, you're not claiming rights to the word sublimation by itself, emporium by itself, but together, you know, and then how you do your logo, the colors and this, that, and the third is what you are, um, uh, you are trying to protect, if that makes sense. Right. Um, so question over here was, let me see. Um, still can be hit even if you make it yourself. Exactly. If it looks uh, similar to a trademark item. Um, thank you for writing that out. Yes, USPTO. Question, is this different for every country or is it a blank? It is for every country. So there's going to be things that are trademarked here, but like you will trademark here, but someone can use it you know, somewhere else. So that happens a lot with um, those in the Asian, I don't, because sometimes over here, you, you say it, I can get, you know, dinged over here. I don't want them to shut down my, my live that I'm doing over on TikTok. But, you know, in a certain Asian country where we will create a lot of things here, right? Even if you kind of go to some of these places to have them manufacture things for you. Well, they're going to take that and they're going to create their own because they are they don't fall under the same laws. Now, there are ways to kind of protect it. And I'm not getting into all that. This is not a class on how to protect yourself. Make sure that you guys do your due diligence. I am not a trademark and patent lawyer. And that's two different things as well. Copyright, trademark and patents are three different things. So you want to make sure that you get with not someone who says they are a, a guru on social media and watching videos here. I am not here to tell you what to do when it comes to trademark, how to do it, you know, how to trademark it. 
get with a trademark and patent and copyright lawyer like get with them to make sure because even like when it comes to special patents you can have something in yours and, and one of the things that you use it's a part of somebody else's patent so you have to do certain things uh, it, it's a lot to it so i've gone through the process so again i'm not here to break all of it down for you I want you guys to be able to go and have the resources and have the information to where you can go and do your own research. And you can, you know, sometimes you're going to have to pay to sit with a consultant and find out, you know, all the ins and outs of these different things. Okay. Um, oh, see, I didn't even see it. And I just saw that. I think it probably did pop up before. If you're looking into trademark something, save, your, save yourself some time, headache, aggravation, and hire a trademark attorney. Yes. And not just someone that's on social media and saying they're a guru, they're this, they're that. They there's a there's a spe, there's a specific type of attorney, you know. So those who do criminal law or family law, like they don't take the the class and the certifications and did all the research uh for this particular, I guess you would say, niche. There are specific attorneys that are trademark attorneys. And not every attorney is a patent attorney, like who can help you with patents because there's a certain way, like there's a lot of things when it comes to patents. So definitely get with an attorney, all right? But we're going to more so talk about this one only because it came up and I'm pretty sure there are other things that are out there, but the confidence, right? So, oh, wait, hold on. I can share my screen with them. I don't know what I'm gonna do because y'all are actually kind of high on this one. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. For y'all on TikTok, Lord Jesus. Well, look, I'm just gonna I'm gonna talk through it. If you're over on TikTok, if you want to see my screen, you're gonna have to go over to Facebook or YouTube. I prefer YouTube. Go over to Honesty Speaking's YouTube channel to see my screen because the way I have you guys positioned right now, um, I'm not gonna be able to like kind of flip it because it's right up on the screen. So if you want to see my screen or want to see it on the playback, go over to Honesty Speaking's YouTube channel and then you'll be able to see my screen. Okay. Um, so let me go over here, share screen, entire screen. I thought I did this already, but I guess I didn't, um, add to stream. All right. So I'm going to come over here. So here is one of the ones, right? So, um, they made it where it was God, the dot for dense, and it had the box around it knowing um, I can't, but he can. So let me see. I think there's a couple of different ones. Um, God. Um, so here is another one. God for dense. Totally different design, right? So they're saying, hey, in this style, with this particular font, if you were to use this and make a shirt off of it, I'm not going to come and say, hey, you can't use my design to sell shirts because, man, you have a really good reach and you did great with marketing and you sold a million units off of a design that you got for three bucks and you got for free because you had the subscription to it. That is really what, what they're saying when, you know, when they go and um, they're, you have to also remember, they're not a US based company. So for them and where they are based at, that trademark doesn't apply in the country where this company is 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 registered at right so they're probably not even thinking about all of the trademark laws and things like that other than the major things like you know your disney like all of your characters whether it's disney nickelodeon marvel you know whoever whatever they're not thinking about anything other than those you know they're not going to let anyone have a nike design an adidas design a, a crocs or you know they're not going to let you have any of those it's like to them it's just simple sayings so as you can see there's one um let's go god fidence um here is another one it's a thinner font you know same exact words right knowing i can't but he can same thing on the other ones it's just written in different ways. So like with this one, maybe someone may, what if um, I should have, I can't, I didn't even do it that way. So what if this was the first one and then somebody else created, you know, the first one that we saw, it was a different font. The box was smaller. They put part of the tagline where it was in script, right? 
let's say the word God, Godfidence was not trademarked, right? Um, and it's just a design. So someone, like most times what happens with this is someone saw a design. Okay, I like that, but I don't really like the font. I don't like how that's written or teach designing, right? So if it's something that's not trademarked and all those different things, you can type it out. You can create your own version of it. And how they have all of these, there would be no issue with it because they did not go and purchase someone's design and now they're reselling it as their own. Um, or they didn't like trace someone's design um, that was a PNG and now they're selling it as their own. It is literally creating it. Like I'm going through this right now. It stings a little bit, but I don't like... I didn't have a Photoshop version of my graduation bands. Things that I literally set and designed, there's a specific layout for it. There's a reason why that layout is there. And because I am one that works mainly in Silhouette Studio, you know, I'll create SVGs. It's easy to do it that way. You kind of got to go through a lot of different hoops and stuff for it. However, I did say, you know, now I am teaching Photoshop more. Most times when it comes to me putting out a template, people then ask questions. Well, how do I design this? How do I use it? And because I was not really teaching Photoshop, even though I know Photoshop, I didn't really create a Photoshop template for it. So somebody went and took my design, exact layout, and they created their own Photoshop version of it. So one would say, you know, that's not something I'm going to trade. I'm not going to spend money on that, but it's like the you know, I took my time to design it. And we know we say, you know, be inspired. So it, it, it has, you end up having mixed feelings about it because you do take your time to design something and someone will make a replica of it or something that is very close to it. But at least they did not come to my website, take my file and now they're reselling it. Like that's where I would really have a problem with it. You could just send someone to my website. They created it in a format that I current at that time did not have. <laughs> that has changed. The Photoshop version will be out. Uh, if not today, it will be out tomorrow. But, you know, like that, this is what happens. But had I had that design, like, you know, um, officially registered, then it's like, okay, you can't use this combination of shapes with this number of offsets. Like, so it's like, let's say if I wanted to do that, right? Someone can probably have that shape. But I had three offsets. It was two inches down. So let's say they would have taken theirs and they would have put it to the top or they would have put it in the middle. Um, so my second one, okay, the shape of it, I have 10 dots. Like, okay, well, I didn't do that. I did bigger dots. Like people would try and play around with that. Well, I didn't copy it verbatim. You have 12 dots. I have 10 dots. Your dots are wide. Mine are per like, this is where the gray areas come in at, right? Um, but in this case, we're going to go over to USPTO, which where did I put it? Um, oh, right here, record of list of display. So you see, there's one that was Godfidence lifestyles. These are dead. Um, there was this Godfidence, which was dead. And if we click on it, oh, come on. All right. It expired. Hold on one second. Let me, I got to move y'all. Don't, don't talk about my stuff in the background. My bad. Okay, hold on. I got to move you out the way because I got Sorry about that. Um, when I moved this one, because I have the two screens, the phone was touching this screen and it closed down StreamYard. So I'm back. <laughs> All right. So um, we're going to go back over here and let's do. All right. Hold on. I have to do a new search. Gotta, gotta look around it though.
Oh, I'm all sharing screen, but I don't have it shared. So hold on. Okay, there it is. So we're going to go confidence and we're going to search that. And I'm going to come here. We're going to open in a new tab. All right. So, um, so this says November 2019. At first it was abandoned. So it says hats, shorts, sweatpants, t-shirts, wristbands uh, as clothing, short sleeve or long sleeve t-shirts. Um, and then they, that they have the name and whatnot there. And then we're going to come to Goffidence Apparel, right? So we're going to look at that one. And so this one said 2018. Hats, hoodies, jackets, sweatpants, t-shirts, baseball caps, all like so it has a certain class classification. And so the name that's there is totally different, right? Um, so then if we come here, the ones that are live, so serial number, and then there's a registration number because this is kind of like the identifier that you get once you go and you just simply apply for it. But if it's not registered, you don't see a registered number, that is you know, it's not registered. So we're just going to come over here, open it a new window. So this was as of two, like they first filing date, they filed this in 2014. So you see how the others came about and they said 2018 through 2000, was it 19, whatever it was, 19, 2018. Um, so those say abandoned to where they probably just said, okay, hey, you know, you have to change something about this. They did it. So they just let it go. Um, but this one has been around um, and it's a standard mark, meaning it's not in relation to any specific colors, any specific font. Simply using this word is if it's not if you're not us and we did not give you permission, it is an infringement on our intellectual property because it's just a standard character mark. It's not associated with any particular font. That makes sense to you guys. If you need to clarify that, you know, let me know. All right. So they have who the registrant is. Um, and now we're going to go back to this one and we're going to go open a new tab. So this one, it is uh, 2011. Right now, this is where it got a little bit kind of like funky because both of these are technically live. Both of these are technically they have registrations. So up here, they do have the classification for clothing, for apparel. They have it for streaming audio. They have it for evangelistic ministry, um, 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 ministry services, um, labels, paper banners, all of that, computer applications. And they have confidence, right? And this is 2000. Filing date was 2011. Now, if this person wanted to, the one, which I still understand how, and this, I wanted to show this, and that's why this was so um, important to show is because they will give registration numbers. And sometimes you just, you really don't know, right? Because they issue both of them registration numbers. Now, I don't know if there was any changes to this to add all of these, but now remember there's like, there was what, four of them. So now we're going to come here. We're going to go new. These are all live. This is 2010, but this is the same name right here. It's the same name on this one that was from 2010 when they did it before. Well, this one was for religious books. So they end up updating it to include all of those other things. The first time they did it, it was just for religious books books um okay wait i gotta go back to here and then we have this one we're going to go to new and this one again is 2011 and it is i gotta know how many i gotta go back so see marshawn evans um unlimited and then you go to this one. It does say the same thing. It says June 14th, 2011, uh, April 18th, 2014. Um, but this one was April 8th, 2011. 
This was December 22nd, 2010. So now like they can end up having this whole battle because they have the same exact like, well, for apparel, they both have it for apparel. And I do believe it was more so, so this one right here says educational services, naming, namely conducting live or in online seminars, workshops, lectures in the field of personal motivation, spiritual awareness, self-improvement. It can get that detail when it comes to your classifications. Um, so if they just had this one, it would be for, and this says educational services. Luckily, I mean, but they do have the one that is for apparel as well. It can get kind of tricky because, oh God, come on, wait, where is it? On this one, it just says t-shirts and how they're, so if someone was to put it on a mug, a hoodie, pants, a flag, a keychain, it, they would most likely still, like depending on, you know, how strong your lure game is and how they're going to make that case. But their trademark says for educational in online um, or in-person services for motivational speaking and da 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 and then they have one that's just for shirts. Why is it telling me that it's not charging? Hold on. So these are things that you have to look for, looking at what the classification is and whoever is sending you this cease and desist. So let's say someone sends it to you and it's not from one of these representatives of these companies. Then that's someone who created it on Etsy or they put it on Facebook. They used it. They saw that you use their design. They're going to come after you and say, hey, this is mine. But if it ain't one of those people, they don't have a leg to stand on because they don't own the intellectual property to that face. All right. Okay. I said phase or phrase. Y'all know what I meant. <laughs> um, but th that's like this right here was one when I, when I saw it, first thing I did was go to USPTO and look for it. And then when I saw the two different, um, the two different companies and they all have registered ones, I'm like, see, this is where us as a country um, and the way laws work. And it's like, you got to uphold it for everything, right? So if you're going to tell, we had this whole thing in South Florida, there was a coffee company called Stardust, not, you know, not bucks, not dollars. It was called Stardust, but their colors were pretty much exactly the same to Starbucks. Um, in that brown and greens and stuff like that. So they end up settling and all those different things, but it was so close to Starbucks. They didn't have the siren as their logo. It was something totally different, but just the sheer name alone and the color combination um, alone made it to where Starbucks won that. And they had to do this whole little settlement thing with, you know, um, you know, with it. That's what trademarks are really for, to protect it and so that someone, there can't be brand confusion. If it's like, we're damn near doing the same thing. I'm pushing a line of shirts. This is something that, you know, and you can't go and try and push the same thing because if somebody's looking for the authentic thing and you're selling a knockoff, this is where it becomes a problem. Um, how they are using it um, will also determine like if, you, if it ever goes to court, you know, going through like how they, it, it's a lot. So you'll of course have to get a lawyer, but this was very interesting to me because there is a company that had it registered and filed for it years before, uh, the one that sent the cease and desist, but who really owns it? Like what would the court of law say in this case? This was so, I, I, I want to kind of follow it. I'm not sure if the young lady's ever going to give any updates if the owner of who, you know, who sent it will ever make an official statement on it. But I would love to know how this plays out because they have four, you know, well, it's really two different companies that have, or two different entities that have live registered trademarks with those exact same words. Um... Yes, they can and run out. Yes, they can. Um, in other words, just stay away from this. So this particular word, yes, but it's not just this one. There's a lot of things that we unknowingly put on shirts 
and things that we create and we are selling them and not knowing that it's infringing on someone's intellectual properties. You'll, um, I'm not going to go back through the whole thing. Um, you can have to probably go back and watch the beginning of it. So uh, just like the word Super Bowl is trademarked by the Super Bowl, um, it's trade by, trademarked by the word, like by NFL. So that's the part that's kind of crazy because, but you know, some people it's trademarked, right? But they don't really go after small. So in the little league, and when it just comes to football, it's like, okay, this is the big bowl, right? Um, and a lot of younger teams, like the rec teams here, when they have their big game, it's called, you know, the Super Bowl. I haven't ever heard of the NFL going after, I think, because people eat them alive if you're messing with these, like little, like these young teams and these uh, rec league teams over uh, the word Super Bowl. Like we know this ain't the NFL. We know that the NFL isn't endorsing these inner city leagues and teams like that. But a lot of teams use that as their, you know, their big game. You know, we're, we're, we're Super Bowl champs, but yes, that is something that, um, um, that they technically go after them for, uh, Yes, this is where the attorney comes into play uh, with the same name in different classes because they can do the rebuttal and explain why it won't be confusing to consumers. Exactly. Um, okay, so someone else over here asked what happened. It wasn't something that happened to me, but because of the platform that I have, I wanted to be able to come on and talk about it. So let me come off of here real quick. Let me, as they would say, um, Let's reset the room. <laughs> That's what they'll say over on Clubhouse. So um, this happened. I, I saw the video about two weeks ago, which <laughs> y'all know me as a professor. Well, some of you guys know me as a, you know, know me how I am, you know, me being in like when I put on professor mode, right? I wanted to say so bad, girl, like you crazy. You're going to talk about the fact that these people came after you and gave you a cease and desist but you on this video making a shirt that you're saying i'm still going to send out to my customer that has these words i was like i said you know i didn't want to make it seem like i was kind of stepping on someone's toes but i was like i want to say so bad girl i appreciate your story and, and putting up but if you don't take this video down because you're giving like it's like saying okay we told you this but you're basically like okay f what the hell you say it because i already got my money for it. i'm going the better thing would have been to just refund the customer for that and not sell it. Or if you're going to do it, at least just send it to them and they would have been none the wiser. But you got, you own, you own another video pressing this phrase. I was just like, okay, girl, do you, boo. But anywho, so I came across this and it was just very interesting to me because she talked about the fact that she got, she didn't type out the file or create it herself, I don't think. I believe she purchased the file from Etsy. So there was a young lady that talked about getting a cease and desist letter um, from uh, the trademark owner, holder of Godfidence, right? Um, and that's something that I had seen before, I had seen on different things. And so she talked about, you know, um, what happened, kind of towards the end of her video, she talked about what happened with that whole situation. Um, so me just being, you know, the researcher that I am, I go and of course I'm looking up the, uh, I'm looking up the trademark. So first thing I did was go to USPTO. Boom. Okay. It's there. Right. Um, she showed, I think part of the letter on there and I'm like, okay, so it was this person that sent it. So it is someone that holds a trademark to it because the names and stuff, the companies, they matched up. So I said, okay, well, let me go just do a search for it. So I end up going to create a Fabrica because that's one of my top sources to go to for designs and mainly fonts. I, for me, I don't really do a lot of text-based designs from any site because I'm just going to create it myself if I need it. But I'll go for like elements and like, you know, um, illustrations and drawings and fonts. That's mainly what I go to create a Fabrica for. Um, I'm teaching a Photoshop class right now. So there are layer styles there. We're going to go over brushes in this upcoming session. So there are brush packs there. So I'll go there for that to be able to use the different br brushes. It's kind of what I use Creator Fabrica for. But, you know, there's a lot of like just text-based designs on there. 
I typically don't, like I say, I typically don't because I'm just going to use my own font and create it myself if it's something that's not trademarked. Um, so she got the design and someone says, okay, yep, I'm giving you commercial use. Like you can go, you can sell, you can put it on shirts, you can do whatever for the text that they use, the layout that they use. They were saying, hey, if I see a shirt with my exact font, my exact colors, my exact layout, I'm not going to come after you and say, hey, that's mine. You can't sell it is what the listing basically says. The problem with that is the actual words themselves belongs to someone. It is someone else's intellectual property, and they have taken measures to to protect themselves and, and claim ownership of it by applying for a trademark because they're building a brand. They're building a business around it. They're not just saying, you know, I just have this saying, I just, I'm, I'm actually creating a brand around it. Um, so they wanted to protect it. So she had to stop selling. And she was like, this is one of my best sellers, my top sellers. And sometimes it can stem from, I don't, again, let's, let's be very clear in this. I don't know the ins and outs. I just know that it was a very interesting situation that can happen to any crafter, you know, who's created a business or creative. So I wanted to just bring awareness to this, especially since I often recommend Creative Fabrica. And I talk about the fact that you have commercial use licensing with the designs and fonts that are on there. But here is a design that even though it's on their site and you have creative, you have um, commercial use licensing by getting it from their site, a company can still come after you. So I felt, you know, it was my due diligence to say that because I'm sending you to a site that has a design that's infringing on someone's trademark. So that's where all of this stemmed from. So just be careful of that. Always double check and see if there is a live registered version of any words that you want to put on a t-shirt. Someone just asked me about uh, creating um, a shirt that says stepping out on faith. You know, it would be wise to go and check to see if someone has a registered trademark for stepping out on faith and whether or not you can put that on apparel. Um, so let's see. Yes. Um, boy, mom. I don't know if, if it's like mama's boy. No, I know boy mom is. That's one that's a really, really big one that um, a lot of people get hit for is Boy Mom. Uh, she was crazy to trademark that phrase because a lot of women have a boy. Yeah. But it was how she like she created a brand. From, it would it, again. Certain things can be trademarked when you are creating a brand around it. It's not just the saying she created a brand around that. So where you go check at is USPTO. You, if I can get someone else to write, get you guys to write that in the comments, where you go to check for trademarks to see if a word is a registered trademark or someone has applied for the trademark is USPTO. This is also where you're going to go at to check to see for your business name. If you really want to be serious about it, you want to make it where it's brandable and marketable, you want to trademark it and protect it, that is where you go to see if your name can't, like if you can really start your business around that particular name. Um, yes, she gave them more ammo. I was like, what the world? Um, but the second phase companies are notified when someone is trying to trademark something that has the same name or similar and they say hold up that's too close so yeah that's what i'm saying i'm like i don't think that first company like if they were notified they didn't say anything if it's maybe like it that company trade it changed hands whether or not they're still actively using it because it was a company so there could be a lot of things to where there now can be two different companies with the exact same phrase in the same classes. I can see if there were different classes, but they have classes that overlap. She says, um, you're right. Thank you for bringing awareness. Um, yes, USPTO is where you would go to search that. 
So that's what we were talking about in this, which I'm about to wrap this up because we're already at an hour. Wow, where did time go? We're at 54 minutes. But I just wanted to come on just to say as creatives um, and crafters, as technically, right? So technically, people will say it is okay if you are creating it for yourself, right? That is false. You are not supposed to, you know, you ever hear, like, you really pay attention. They say it kind of fast, um, but it says, but it's more so like the broadcast cannot be recreated, reproduced, rebroadcasted without the express written permission of blah, 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 right? The same thing applies for any type of, um, any type of design or when it's trademarked. Even if you're making it for yourself, if you did not get those items from someone who is authorized to sell it, case in point, Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. Well, Michael's don't sell fabric, do they? No, I don't think they do. But like Joann's, Hobby Lobby. So let's say they were authorized to sell a specific, you know, um, Care Bears or Mickey or, or, um, Hello Kitty, you know, whatever, like these patterns, right? So you can technically use that, um, get those patterns, and you can make clothes for yourself, your grandkids, your kids, make it for whoever. It gets kind of, of a gray area if, yes, you purchase this fabric, right? But you can't go and sell items. Uh, Cricket had cartridges that had Disney Princess, a lot of Disney things. You can take those and you can make things for yourself. Just because you purchased those cartridges did not mean that you can then go and say, I'm selling a Mickey shirt because I use this Mickey file from this Cricket cart. Like it, it's confusing as hell. I mean, me saying it, it's confusing. But you cannot really go and sell it and say, hey, this is a Mickey Mouse shirt because Disney already sells Mickey Mouse shirts, even though you had that file from them. Even though you have the file, like the fabric, how you word it is, you know, is really going to get you kind of caught up. When people go and they are drawing murals, you're, you weren't given permission to draw this or paint this in their likeness. They can come after you. That's why we said lawyer. It, it gets very, it's a kind of gray area when it comes to that and what you can and cannot do. So just because people say you can use it for personal use, what happens when you use it for personal use, you're not broadcasting that you made it, right? So who's going to know that you made it? That's what people are really saying. When you go, you make it for yourself. You're not broadcasting it um, as for sale. If you go and you put it in a group, like, you know, we're not a group, um, on social media. You took a picture with your shirt, you post to social media. That's not really going to get you, like, in trouble because there's nothing that said that you, you know, where this came from, that you made it yourself. You don't, if you can say, I got it from somebody. You have to tell them where the heck it came from. But normally when it's private, it's not out there. There's no proof that you're selling it. You're taking money for someone's intellectual property. But technically, when you go and just Google an image and you bring it into whatever design program and you're designing around it, it's wrong. Like, it's straight up wrong in the eyes of the law. Okay? Um, I made sure I got a business lawyer, also a trademark copyright lawyer, uh, waited an entire year. Um, Disney wrote cease and desist for a number of small businesses here on TikTok. They do not play. Exactly. Um, I create a lot of shirts and merch uh, by Amazon, and there are people out there that see popular phrases out there, and they will trademark them. This is very much so true. And what they, it's not that they will trademark them. A lot of the times they will register for it. So just because they apply for it doesn't mean that it was accepted. So that's the most important part um, is whether or not it's going to be accepted. Now you may go and see, they, they register for it. If you want to kind of hold off to see, because if they go and they deny them it, and they'll have to either make change, give them time to make change or they're going to abandon it. Then they don't have a leg to stand on. 
but there are people that will try and take phrases, but that's not what trademark is for. People have it twisted in that, oh, I just want to trademark this because it's a popular phrase and they're going to shut them down every single time. Um, because some people don't know the law. Some people don't know how these things work. They just kind of see. And the other part of it, we create this mess, right? You see somebody have something, oh my God, you have a file for that. I want that, I want that, I want that. So it's like, okay, well, shoot, y'all. Oh, I think they like me. Oh, I think they, all right, I can make some money off of this. All right, cool. Let me go and put it out there. All right, y'all, go to my Etsy site, go to my website and buy it because people are wanting it. We also kind of create this, this issue because we see people with something and the first thing we say is, well, where's that file? I want that file. Where do I go get that file? So we created this culture. Um, they must have some type of crawlers based on the words used. So part of it, yes. And other parts of it is when it comes, we have to remember social media makes it accessible. Cause all you gotta do is, uh, um, uh, you know, if he tells you put hashtags on everything, hashtags are snitches. So if I have a, a, um, a, a brand, right? So I'm, I'm the owner of God for this, right? I'm always using this hashtag. So we're, you know, we're people train you and they teach you use all these hashtags, hashtag it up. This is how you get found on social media. So you also get caught on social media as well. So they probably didn't have a crawler. It was they're going and they're want to look at all of their content that, you know, for their their hashtag of Godfidence, right? So when you click on it and now, oh, no, Hoppo. Hoppo, who that woman? Why she got a video? Why she got a shirt talking about or pack an order with me? And it got our phrase on it. So it's not to say they had crawlers. It might be that you just told them yourself with your hashtags. Hashtags can be beneficial, but they can also, they going to be what gets you in trouble. <laughs> so back to work I go. Thank you for joining. Thank you for commenting and engaging. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Don't laugh at me. But yeah, so I say all of this to say, just make sure that you guys check, um, protect yourselves. Um, uh, it, it, it gets kind of, you know, it, it really is a great area for us as creatives and crafters and making custom items and people will come to you wanting things they saw somewhere else. And it's like, OK, well, you know how we say I want to support, you know, we will always want support. Right. Like we want. Why don't you buy it from me? And we tend to get upset if a friend, a family member, this is the this is the creator of it. Right. We get upset if they might go to the, like, this is the first place they saw. I'm going to go to the creator of this. But in your mind, it's like, well, dang, I make shirts. I make tumblers. Why didn't you come to me? But they went to the creator. I know it gets kind of hard because we're building these custom businesses. And, you know, you have all of these different phrases that you want to create designs around and stuff like that. But it can get very, 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 very tricky when we're talking about just creating, so I, I had to talk, a discussion about this, you know, ver, uh, custom versus personalized versus novelty and keepsake, like those are different categories. So we're just kind of creating these custom things where it's like, okay, you want this phrase. All right, I'm going to do it in my own way. and I'm going to do this. I'm going to switch it up from how they do it. It's not exactly the same. Um, and I'm going to give you your own version, right? but we run into situations like this. So that's why I just wanted you guys to be mindful of that, that as creatives and as crafters, you have to make sure that you are protecting yourself in this journey of, you know, trying to build your own brand. You don't want your brand to be tarnished for something that you unknowingly did. And, but once you know, you know, it's up to you to take that risk. <laughs> hashtags or snitches. I'm a trademark down this plan, but I actually might make I might make a shirt that it says hashtag or snitches. Um, oh, that's a very interesting one. That's a totally different con uh, conversation. But even for pictures, right? So this is why 
it's really, I'm not sure if any of you guys have ever experienced like senior pictures and, or even if you go to a, um, a photographer, if you go and take your pictures, let's say to like Walgreens or like certain places, some people will require you to show that release from that photographer. Even though you have paid your money to them to take your pictures, they have to give you a release because those pictures are technically their intellectual property. Even though you pay for it, yes, it's your face. It's their work and that they took the pictures, which is why some companies will ask you for the release of these pictures to say it is okay for you to reproduce these because most times photographers will have their own way of like printing them and they want to charge you a whole lot of money, right? Um, when it comes to images of celebrities or things that you pull from the internet, LeBron James himself got hit with a cease and desist. Um, there was a photographer that took a picture of him. He took that picture and reposted it. And that person said, you don't have the right to repost my intellectual property, but it's my face, but it's my picture. So there was this whole back and forth with it. It's a lot of gray areas in this, guys. Like I said, sometimes you will unknowingly put yourself in a position where someone can come after you legally. This is going to be the nature of the game. So um, one of the things that um, I am doing uh, a part of like one of the sessions within our designing class is learning how to take effective pictures of the, your take pictures of your items yourself. Um, uh, I had a situation where when I was going to do um, some senior things, I told them, I said, if need be, I have a camera. This, this is why your girl spent a whole lot of money on a professional camera to where if I have to come and, hey, put your uniform on, get a backdrop, I can take pictures of you and I can use those in my designs. And I don't have to worry about you getting a release from Fox Smart or NYX or whoever, whoever all these people are. I don't have to worry about a release from it because I, I took the picture to put on this posters. Sometimes it can get as serious as that. When it comes to taking your senior pictures, you can pay for a package, but if you want that CD for the release of that, they literally charge you anywhere from $250 to $400 for the release and the rights to go and have these pictures produced outside of them. Another situation, I just dealt with this. I saw someone, you know, get offer condolences about my grandmother, right? So I'm, I, I remember this when my aunt passed years and years and years ago, and I didn't get a service program. So I, you know, contact, because it's like, okay, what's the purpose of you putting your information on the back if I can't contact you if I need some extras? So they were like, oh, no, um, you have to go through the funeral home what you put your name back here for if I can't come and get one, but it's like, okay, you don't know what their, their contract was as far as whether or not they can sell them and the funeral home, not get any money because it's like, Hey, they found out about you through, it can get all kind of crazy. But I went through this because I created the service program for my grandmother. They were paid to do theirs. They saw mine. Oh, this is lovely. I like this. Why are we creating it again? Because this is the one I created and I'm going to get printed somewhere else. Okay, well, why can't we just use this? Because you didn't pay me for it. I'm not. So if you would like to use it, you have to pay me for the release of it. And that's what not the funeral home because, baby, I got a whole hula when that video, Jesus, that was the whole. But the person that was printing it, they had to pay me for the release of that so that they can just go ahead and produce it because when we wanted an extra hundred, it's like, okay, well, the ones that we create, it is our intellectual property. So we're going to charge you $750 for something that only costs $200 to print. You already have the first hundred, but for these, th so people can do what they want when it's their intellectual property. Um, this kind of also goes into when you are contracted, right? So the designer will create it. But if the designer was commissioned and contracted by the funeral home to create it, that design, which I end up understanding that after the fact, why they couldn't sell it to me, that design does not belong to the designer. It belongs to the funeral home because they paid you to just do this service. So the, you can't go and just cut us out and sell 
one or two copies because it doesn't belong to you. So contracts in my creative business, we just talked about terms and conditions. These are things that you have to outline to protect yourself. It's so crazy that all of this is coming back to every class that I am teaching live right now, the creative business program, the design program, like all of it is coming full circle. That's amazing. Thank you, God. Look, that was right. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Hey, hey, hey. Um, but yeah, pictures, they belong to someone. They belong to that photographer as well. And if you don't have the release for it, they technically can come after you. Everyone that's doing all of these lovely graduation things, you do it at your own risk. So I'm not saying to not do it, but technically you do that at your own risk. Because if that particular family did not pay for certain releases, it can become an issue with it being reproduced. Most times they're not going to come after you, but because it's just a lot to kind of know they got all these schools. But if ever somebody wanted to be completely, completely petty, they would probably come to you and you're going to probably, you know, go back to the parent, but you are the one that printed it and produced it. And you're the one that's advertising it. So you're going to be the one they can really probably come after both of y'all because the parent gave you the picture when the picture was for them and not for, not, it was like they can give it out to someone Hey, just going to have it personally in your home, but now you're giving it to someone to produce something and you gave them money and you didn't pay us for the release. That's a great area that can get you caught up. Okay. Um, so see, we charge $500 plus for digital images with the release. Yeah. Um, Yes, just like if you take a photo of anybody on your phone, that photo belongs to you. Yes, I always ask um, before I post a pic. But yeah, it gets kind of gray um, in this. Uh, it's it's a, And I've said it before. There's so much more to being in business for as a crafter, a creator, you know, a digital creator, whatever it is. There's so much more to it than just producing your items. A lot of coaches, gurus, instructors, and so they're going to teach you about the creative part of it, but never make you aware of all of these potential pitfalls. You know, a lot of times we hear about it for the bigger things, the Disney of it all, the NFL, the sports teams, the NBA, like we, we hear about the big things. But there is a lot of, you know, really isn't gray. It really is black and white. But because we, you're not exposed to it enough, we don't really think about these things. So it becomes kind of gray. So, yeah. So hopefully this was helpful and beneficial for you guys. Um, and, you know, you are more than welcome to do as you please. Um, I'm not going to say that I always, you know, squeaky clean and what I do. I've created some things for myself for, you know, sports things, because you may not find the things that you really like, or you waited to the last second. You want to kind of, you know, create stuff, I, you know, created stuff for my kids. We all have done this. We, we literally have done it, you know, before, which is why I think when it happened to me, it kind of stung a little bit. With those fans, some people say, oh, it's just something as simple as, you know, it's, it's just a fan. It's just paper. It's just the shape. But, you know, we often want to get credit for the things that we do. And it stung a little bit. I was kind of a, I was thrown back quite a bit because it, when I tell you, it's like a, it's, it's like it was copy and paste. Um, but knowing that, you know, I have even like personally, I don't really sell anything that's like that, but personally where i have gone and made a shirt for my kid with you know just made a chiefs one for mj because he loves the chiefs you know for the sumo for him to wear so it, it just gets very grayish <laughs> just so be mindful of it um and uh yeah so hopefully this was helpful for you guys if it was please be sure to give this video a thumbs up share it out uh share it out in groups when you see people talking about trademarks and infringing and stuff like that they may not have uh, oh, I'll, I'll do it this way. If you learn something new, go ahead and put 365 in the comments. If you learn something new, 
during this live broadcast. Put 365 in the comments. All right. Um, so if you are putting 365, that means you learned something and you might see someone that's going to ask about it, share it with them. Go copy the, YouTube, copy the YouTube link, post it, share it with someone because this is something that can really end up hurting your businesses before they even really get started. All right. So I'm here to help um, in more ways than just the design part and just showing you how great our sublimation paper works. Um, I really want you guys to be well-informed and educated business owners, all right? And know that there's a lot more to business than just the creative side of it all. All right, y'all. Until next time, have a great one. Continue to unlock your creativity be incredible. And don't forget to visit shop.hs8365.com to purchase your honesty speaking products or to sign up for one of my classes. If you want to join us tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the date, the current date is March 13th. So if you're watching this in the very, very near future, that class won't be live anymore. Um, so on March 13th, 2023, you know, I'll be live. Well, we'll be in our Zoom session at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, for our creative business session. Um, so go and check that out. Uh, there is a one-time option as well as an option to pay for it weekly. Uh, so you can go check that out as well. All right. So <laughs> I try. <laughs> she says, I'm glad I watched 365. You know your ish. I mean, you know. I try. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm a professor for a reason. And the fact that I research and try and bring you guys and try and educate you guys. So, all right, y'all. Peace.